hi, I'm Trish. I'm not having a good day. Um, so I, oh, first up, apologise for that wonky angle. Probably hasn't made it much better. Anyway, um, I apologise in advance in case this gets a little feisty. Um, um, I don't even know what I am. Um, you probably all know that I've been having a lot of trouble with my lap band, particularly since I had revision surgery um, six weeks ago. Um, I've got reflux now, which I'd gotten rid of by losing so much weight, so I'm back on Pariot. I'm not happy about that. I've been having a lot of trouble eating, um, and it's it's not like normal stuck, um, and I'm very, very familiar with stuck. When I get food stuck, I get the pain, I go, I put my fingers down my throat, I have a little vomit, big chunk of unchewed food comes out, and then I'm fine, I'm good to go, for the most part, unless it's a really bad stuck. Um, but lately, I've been, it's been feeling like I'm stuck, and like just, you know, that really bad pain, so I go and I put my fingers down my throat, and all I'm really bringing up is slime and saliva, um, so I'm not really bringing up any food, but that seems that the, the heaving seems to let the food go through. So it's not like my normal stuck. It's been very, very odd. Um, now I can understand getting stuck on things like, um, you know, bread, rice, pasta, meat, dry chicken, that sort of thing, um, which I have been getting stuck on. But I've also been getting stuck on things like canned fruit and yogurt and jelly cordial so something is definitely definitely not right so anyway I had my uh, post-op appointment at the clinic two weeks ago um, and if you've been playing along at home you'll know that I really was not happy with the outcome of that um, so that surgeon said that he wanted me to come back to the clinic in six weeks I told the clinic receptionist that they sent me out a letter um, with an appointment in eight weeks time and I thought, I absolutely, I, I can't live like this anymore. I cannot deal with this pain and this vomiting. And, you know, I've still got that lower left-hand pain as well, of course. So I called the hospital to say to them, um, I need an appointment earlier than that eight weeks. I need it earlier than six weeks. Can you please fit me in? I can't deal with this pain almost every single time I eat. I can't deal with vomiting every day. If my lap band isn't slipped yet, it's going to be soon from all the vomiting. And they said, no, we can't give you another appointment. You have to go to the emergency department. And I said, but it's not an emergency. I'm, I'm in pain and I'm having a lot of trouble eating, but it's not an emergency. And she said, well, no, no, you can't have an, an earlier appointment. You have to go to emergency. So I, I live out on the Mornington Peninsula and I'm on a pension, so I'm poor. They've got, um, so I can't afford to, to drive into the Alfred Hospital and leave my car in the car park there for God knows how many hours while I'm in emergency. I can't afford those kind of parking fees, so I get the train and the bus and I walk and everything. Now, because we're having, um, um, what's it called, Crossing, crossings removed on my line, they're replacing um, trains with buses for part of the trip, so that makes the trip longer. So... I went into the Alfred today, into the emergency department for something that's absolutely not an emergency. I was so embarrassed. Um, I, I travelled today walking buses, trains for four hours. Uh, luckily, when I got into the Alfred, um, I was there was only me and one other person there in the emergency like waiting room, and so they, you know, they put me through really fast. They triaged me really fast. Apparently, I was the third person with like band problems in there today. Um, so they, they put me through, they triaged me and put me through to like the next waiting area. No, I only waited there for an hour. And then they got me through and I saw, you know, a couple of different doctors and they did a blood test that all came back fine. Um, he was talking about an x-ray. So I, I showed him my uh, previous x-rays and I showed him, you know, the difference in how the, the lap band is laying. And I said, I don't know if that's like a normal variation. And he said, Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it is. Um, let's do another x-ray. And I thought, well, is it normal or isn't it? So anyway, so I had another two x-rays. And when he came back to tell me the results of those, um, 
he, I said, you know, he, he said, your lap band, I, I asked him, I said, is my, does my lap band look normal? And he said, yeah, 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 it looks fine. I'm thinking, you don't seem really convinced about this. So anyway, I saw a couple of doctors and they decided to um, take all of my fluid out, which really, really upset me because I, I, I said to them, I said, I only, I don't want... I don't want all of the fluid out. I'm, I'm having enough trouble maintaining my weight. I'm not maintaining my weight. I'm gaining weight. And now you want to take all the fluid out. Can you just take, you know, 0.3 or 0.4 mils out? Because my band is really sensitive to fills and unfills. So he went away. Another doctor came and he talked to me as well. And he said, you know, when this happens... you know, And, and they'd already said to me, they, 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 they came out and they said, there's nothing wrong with your lap band, but we need to unfill all of the fluid so that the inflammation and swelling can go down. But there's nothing wrong with your lap band. That's not what is causing this. Maybe, maybe my brains aren't working because I'm really fucking hungry. But to me, that, that, that makes no sense. So anyway, they said that they would take all the fluid out. And actually, I've got to check that because they, when he took all the fluid out, he asked me, how much fluid do you have in? And I said... I'm pretty sure that I've got 4.9 mils in my band. And I'm just going to check it here because I've got it written down in this website in my little blurb in the bottom. And so then he, he took all the, the fluid out and he said there was only 3.9 mils in there. So why was I so tight then? Why have I been having... So, and, and, and it makes sense, you know, it's, it's, I, I know it's not leaking because I had the revision surgery, they probably took some, well if they've changed my tubing they would have taken out all of the fluid and then like refilled it. So they, if, when they've changed the tubing on my lap band, and I know they have, they would have like completely, like all the fluid would have come out so they would have had to refill it. Now why they've only put 3.9 mill back in when I had 4.9 in before and it was working perfectly for me that was my perfect perfect fill uh, particularly as they um, they said they didn't do anything to my band or well, they can't tell me if they did anything to my band so if they've done nothing to my actual band why would they need to put less fill in there so anyway but it also begs the question if I had if I've got one mil less, like if I if I used to have 4.9 mil and that was like the, the perfect fill for me and then I only had 3.9, why was I having so much trouble with restriction? Why was I having so much trouble eating? I don't, I don't understand that. Anyway, so I don't have any fluid in my band now. Um, apparently that's only for two weeks. He wants me to go back to the clinic in two weeks and he's sent off... Um, like a request to the people who make the appointments to get me in in two weeks. I doubt they will. They never do. It'll probably be four weeks. So that will be two to four weeks of me um, having no fill in my band, having no no safety net, and I'm I'm absolutely shitting myself because I know I, I don't have the control. And he was giving you know trying to give me the pep talk. Well, you know you you're obviously very motivated because you've lost so much weight and blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, yeah, that, that motivation is in that fluid in my band. That's what stops me when I can't stop myself. So um, I, don't, I don't know how I'm going to go. I may just have to accept that I'm going to gain even more weight. But then, you know, they're not going to be able to get the right fill, like, straight up. So it's going to take me realistically several months to get back to the right fill and and I was in the hospital they did a blood test they did a, um, a, an x-ray but now I have to go like they didn't do it when I was in the hospital I've got to go now and have a barium swallow done before I go back to see them in two weeks why what is a barium swallow going to show I've got no fluid in my band now. There's, there's going to be no point. It's not going to show anything. No fluid in my band. It's, of course everything's going to go through. So I'm just... And they wouldn't let me eat. And I went in, because like this morning I got up and I tried to have some breakfast and I couldn't eat because it was I was just in too much pain. And so I didn't even have like half my cup of tea still sitting here from this morning. So, and... 
And then I didn't leave the hospital until 5.30 because I was in there for like five hours. And I was so hungry. And they even brought like the tea trolley around, like the dinner trolley. And oh, my, my eyes lit up. And then I said to the nurse, I said, oh, can I have something to eat? This is after they've taken all my fluid out. Oh, and when they took all my fluid out, they gave me a drink of water and they said, we need to make sure that you can drink water. And I said, well, I wasn't having a problem drinking water other than the one time when my cordial got stuck, I don't have a problem drinking anything. And they said, oh, you know, we need to make sure. And I'm thinking, are you, are you new around here? So anyway, I drank the water and they were all really happy. Oh, you know, we've fixed the problem and blah, blah, blah. And I said to them, I said, no. I could drink water when I came in here. If you want to test that this has done something, you need to give me a sandwich or something to eat. So anyway, I saw the, saw the, the dinner trolley coming around and I got very, very excited and I said to the nurse, can I have something to eat? And she said, no, no, you have to be on fluids for a couple of days. And I was so, so hungry. So anyway, they said I could go home and I was thinking, where, where am I going to get, you know, some kind of like fluid type food while I'm out? that's going to, you know, like get me, you know, two hours home. So on my way out, I was talking to one of the nurses. I was just checking to see if I had to get paperwork and she was asking me how I was. And I said, oh, I'm very, very hungry. And so she went and she got me a bowl of soup and a little thing of custard. Now, I don't know why the other nurse couldn't have done that. Just, just because I can't eat food doesn't mean she couldn't have found me some kind of fluids like soup and custard. And she put me in this little room and I, I had my soup and I had my custard. And then I went, I went to the toilet like before I left um, to fix up my lipstick because I don't go anywhere without lipstick. And I looked in the mirror and my eyes were all red because I, I wasn't actually crying in the hospital, but I did get a bit teary, but I didn't actually spill tears. And so my eyes were all red and my face was all flushed. And I thought, oh, that nurse, she, she, she took pity on me because I just look so absolutely awful. So... So that's where I'm at at the moment. I have no fluid in my band, so I'm probably just going to have, like, a food jamboree for the next few weeks and, you know, I'll be 100 kilos by the time I get back to see the surgeons. And there's still no idea why I have this pain in my left side. Uh, I did talk to the surgeons about it today and they said, we've done all of the tests. Your lap band is fine. It's not. It's not, otherwise it wouldn't have been so restricted and they wouldn't be sending me for a barium swallow. But in their eyes, everything is perfect. And so he said that I, although I had to, had to really sort of like wriggle it out of him. He didn't want to actually say it, but he agreed with me that um, I am very most likely intolerant to the band. That, that is that there, there is a foreign object in my body and my body doesn't cope with that. So it's causing pain. So he said that I uh, will need to make a decision whether or not to talk to the surgeons at my next clinic appointment about having my lap band removed um, and getting bypassed instead. I can't be sleeved because of my um, tendency to reflux. Um, so it looks like, and, and you know what, at, at, this, at this point, having had this pain for three and a half years and been just absolutely fucked around, and just having test after test after test and then saying, oh, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong. Hello, I'm still in pain. Um, I, I understand now why there are so many people who have been lap banded and then unlap banded and had an alternate form of weight loss surgery saying that they just wanted that piece of shit out of their body. Um, that's, that's, that's where I am at at the moment. I'm, I'm, I just I feel really shit about having it in my body and I just I want it gone. I want it gone, but I do need something to help me maintain, although the reality is if I get bypassed, I'll probably lose weight whether I want to or not, so that's going to be a very fine balancing game for me, um, although I'll probably only lose all the weight that I've regained. So anyway, that's it. I'm going to go and make a day's worth of calories in one smoothie, I think. I'm going to give it a good, good red hot shot. I, I won't be able to do it. I'll probably only be able to get 600 calories in it to make up some um, frozen banana and blueberries with coconut milk and chocolate protein powder. I think that's all. And then later on for dessert I might have some really, 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 really super mushy Vitabrits. And that's it for me for now. I am seeing the plastic surgeon on Monday, so um, I'll update you about that then as well. 
sorry, forgot a little detail. When I went in there, the first doctor I saw um, was talking about how um, I'd had adhesions taken down during the revision surgery. So he said, ooh. <laughs> so he, oh no. This is my fancy setup. I put my, my phone on a, um, an old cotton tips box. Um, so he seemed to know everything that had gone on in my revision surgery because he was like talking to me about it, like in detail, right? And so I was trying to get more information out of him and he didn't want to tell me. So then later on, another two doctors later, um, he was actually very nice and he was trying to be very helpful and everything. So I said to him, um, I know, still no one has been able to tell me what went on in that revision surgery other than that some adhesions were taken down like between the tubing and the diaphragm, would you please be able to give me a copy of that surgical report? And he said, yeah, no problems. I'll go and print it off now. And I thought, yes, good. So he went away and he came back a few minutes later and he said, oh, um, there's no surgical report on your file, so I can't print it off for you. And I'm thinking, but someone was looking at it earlier. Someone was able to read what had been done earlier and now it's not there. So... Maybe I'm being paranoid, but something's just not something's just not right. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna call the hospital tomorrow and um, ask them for a copy of the report to be sent to me. But I, I have a feeling they're going to be resistant, so I'm gonna have to go through freedom of information. But I'm gonna get that ball rolling because I just I just want to know what they did to me. I want to know if they went down to the bottom of the tubing and had a look down there to see if there were adhesions down there as well, because that's where my pain is. And if there's adhesions down there and they didn't look down there, then the adhesions are still there, although they're probably not because they replaced the tubing. I don't know what they did to me, and I think I have a right to know. That's really all for now. <laughs>